Alternative leagues wanted to mention stuff about the MLS and to the Saudi league. On the MLS mm -hmm. side, I wanted to say I fully believe Inter Miami are going to convince Jordi Alba and Sergio Ramos oh, yeah. to join Busquets and Lionel Messi with Tata Martino coaching. Already, yep. these four players are going to be there. And in the near future, Luis Suarez will be joining after leaving Gremio as a legend too. So go bold, Inter Miami. That's my first shout out. <laughs> Wanted to you can you can go them. you can go as bold as you want, but my goodness, um, I think they're I, I think some Inter Miami fans are going to want some youth uh, in there as well because there is no guarantee that those guys win um, anything. Al albeit it is very interesting, and not only that, you ready for this? They promised three signings, of which Jordi Alba is likely one of them. They promised three signings by July fifteenth. So we're talking about. <laughs> Less than two weeks from now. Less Whoa. than two weeks from now, you're going to see Inter-Miami uh, starting to be built out um, considerably for the second half of this season. Um, but it 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 interests me. Um, <laughs> it interests me a lot. Like, why are we bringing in the 30-plus-year-olds um, into... I don't know. You, you I don't know. I'd like... Blair, to... Brenner, in the past, Alish Magno, I do believe yeah. more youngsters are going to come to the MLS. I do believe and Why not that. to Miami? To, and, and why not to, to Miami? Miami? And to Miami. I want to see Messi there. I believe that. Uh, yeah, bring bring in uh, who's who's the next Messi in Argentina, right? See if you can pry <laughs> well, away. There's no way in hell. No but one. see if you can pry away Gianluca <laughs> Prestiani uh, and bring him in. He's not the next Messi. There's nobody that's the next Messi. Dribbler, but though. bring in someone like a Prestiani if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, if Tiago Almada was on the same team as Lionel Messi, I would be here for that every day of the week, right? Um, but with but with that said, with that's that said, league, it makes it. Jordi Alba's still got tank. You know, he's got uh, gas left in the tank. Busquets got gas in, left in his tank. I'm sure. Uh, it's a new adventure. Uh, I'm here for it. It's not going to break break the bank of Inter Miami's ownership group. Um, <laughs> Messi Messi is going to, you know, speak to that. Uh, but ultimately, it, it's going to bring more eyeballs uh, to South Florida and more eyeballs to Major League Soccer in general in a very very key window of uh, massive massive years ahead. It's so it's true. We'll see. And mentioning, I'm mentioning eyeballs and transfers mm -hmm. too. I said MLS with the Saudi League and a youngster. Let's pick the Saudi League. We know the money is a huge influence to that. But Ali Tiad have signed Benzema. They've signed N'Golo Kante, which N'Golo Kante has already bought a club too with the third division in Belgium. But they're going to sign yep. to Jota for 30 million mm -hmm. from Celtic. A player that is still a youngster. And Befica is even going to get 9 million because of that deal. So seeing Ali mm -hmm. Tiad, they're investing big time in the Saudi League. The top three ma the top three teams in the Saudi League, Al Ittihad, Al Nasser, and Al Hilal, all three are coached by Portuguese managers. Nun Spirit Sant, yeah. Luis Castro now, and Jorge Zuz. Six managers are already in the Saudi League. Huge influence already. Oh my gosh. And Luis Castro leaves Botafogo. That's in first place but the folk fans are so unlucky they gotta pray on thinking swatch to still maintain that boldness but he leaves but the folk to go to al nasser oh my yeah. god insane yeah, al nasser sign christian ronald they now get a new manager with luis karst they can sign seku fofana which he was in the team of league on best team of the season of league on they signed brozovic already too oh the transfers mm. bono maybe for goalkeeper with Ospina. insane Al Nasser, they really want to win that 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 World Cup of clubs one day. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, and I, I believe every team in in Saudi in the Saudi Pro League they uh they get eight foreigners. So mm. this ain't done yet. This ain't done yet, right? Mm. Uh, it's nowhere close. Uh, but Al Halal is the most successful team in Saudi history, and they are the most successful team of recent times. Uh, so I, I, I'm thinking and that's the one that George Jesus Jesus signed for. Um, so you know you've got Kaladu Kulabali, uh, you've got Ruben Neves. Um, so it's gonna be it, it, it'll it'll be very very interesting. But this is not done. The spigot is not on. It's just interesting that like you know Chelsea has the direct line to them. But come on, nobody wants to take Harry Maguire for Man United. <laughs> Man United can't get a sale to to a Saudi team. Um, Arsenal. Can't get a sale to a Saudi. No, I'm just kidding. But Harry there Maguire is uh to the Saudi League. That would be like that would be the the dream. 
of Man United fans hysterical. to get rid of him. That would be <laughs> yeah, like yeah, Phil but... Jones could be going. You never know. Phil Jones, yeah. he's leaving. A legend of Man United. <laughs> but the pull. Speaking about mm. Premier League legends, Firmino, Roberto Firmino has gone to the Saudi League, which that's a big deal. And Golo Kante left Chelsea, but I understand. The Saudi leagues attracted Christian Ronaldo, Benzema, N'Golo Kante, Firmino, Mendy, Kolibali, Jota, Rubanevs. The list goes on and on. And managers Luis Castro and Jorge Jesus, which is the second time of Jorge Jesus. Which he, he won the league yeah. when he was there. <laughs> he, he won yeah. the league back in the day. 2018. I've, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. And for those that, that don't necessarily know, it's... Four clubs within the Saudi Pro League that that have received this injection of cash, and those are where all of these signings are necessarily coming into. Um, and the three we just talked about are three of those four. Um, the majority of them are the most successful in the AFC Champions League and in the domestic league. So I, I, I can't, listen. What if the four teams? They are, are out there. There's there's two in Jeddah which is the second biggest city in Saudi Arabia. And there's two in Riyadh, uh, which is obviously the largest in Saudi Arabia. Uh, but you've got Al-Hitihad, you've got Al-Ali, uh, which was just promoted this particular season. That's owned 75% of the the um, private, not private, the public investment fund. Um, you've got Al-Nasser and you've got um, Al-Halal. Okay. Al-Halal, if I didn't already mention them. So uh, yeah, two in the, the largest ones. And then Al-Jeba, uh, Al Jeba, is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Yeah, is is the other one you want to watch because they are going to be the ones that did not necessarily get the injection from the public investment fund that's going to want to keep up because they've been successful as all get out in the pro league. They've been very successful in recent years. So it's going to be interesting to see how they, uh, like why those four out of all the clubs. Um, but ultimately, um, this is very much scraping the surface. So I have a feeling we are going to be name dropping for the rest of the summer uh, <laughs> and then some. But most importantly, what this has actually allowed me to do, Alex, is I've always wanted a reason to go in and study more about AFC Champions League. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about just a massive, massive part of the world. Massive part of the world that has this, yes, there's a lot of money, but it has this culture it has this that definitely from the western hemisphere perspective you know i don't know enough about it and i am excited to get to know not just the teams of the saudi pro league that we are attracted to because ruben neves is going there because other teams are going there but also seeing you know more eyeballs on the j league it's on the k league the, the, the korean brentford league player, the brentford center yeah. back just signed a lot of people yes. are saying that he's one of the best south korean players in recent years there's so the scouts so much talent they're happy. Yeah, so much <laughs> talent, yet untapped. And we got to remember where Matoma came from. We got to remember where some of these guys came from. But it will be interesting to see if the Saudis can take back the power dynamic in the AFC Champions League, which I believe the South Koreans and the uh, the Japanese have, have been very good at. And we've all seen that the scouting departments all across mm -hmm. Europe, in particular, have been very, very in tune now with the J-League. Most speci uh, specifically, bringing in a lot of these players that we could list here. Um, so I'm most excited to see how this shapes our attention uh, beyond that, because that's what it's all about. It's about attention mm -hmm. and them getting more eyeballs on hopefully building it out. And Ronaldo believes in his heart of hearts. He believes that if with the proper investment, not just in players coming in, mm -hmm. but in infrastructure in Saudi Arabia, Cristiano Ronaldo has said that he thinks the Saudi league could be the top five, top five within the next five years. That's a bold statement. I think that's a little that's, ambitious of Cristiano Ronaldo to say that. Ronald. That's not 20 billion investment in football. <laughs> oh it's, my it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. So oh we'll see what happens. But but one last mention, yes. one, one last mention, not of the Saudi, to go back to Major League Soccer, the other side of the planet. Um, there was something that, that happened, not just Tata Martino coming in, mm. but I have to mention, Lionel Messi was least successful, if I recall, under Tata Martino. <laughs> that, 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 it does need to be said. It's it does need to be said. Be because, yeah, because there were, there were some, you know, it wasn't always rosy. It wasn't sure. always great under Tata Martino. But Tata Martino is the right hire. He knows MLS. He's won with Atlanta United. He is one since Major League Soccer has started uh, opening up the purse strings and spending more, right? 
And and I have a feeling that Tata Martino, not just because Leo Messi is there, but I have a feeling Tata Martino will know how to navigate the weird labyrinthine rules that are Major League Soccer. So I think uh, more Martino than Messi is actually the reason why Inter Miami could win an MLS championship in the uh, in the future Imagine. because Martino knows how to navigate it. That'd be oof, the MLS champion. That Inter Miami with Messi. That's the storyline. Imagine in the FIFA Club World Cup, we see a matchup in the knockout mm. stages between Inter Miami with Tata Martino and Lionel Messi and Luis Castro with Al Nasser with Cristian Ronald. Everybody would be that. tuning into the FIFA Club World Cup. Historic yeah, numbers. And I do believe You're coming that. here for that, right? Yeah. You're joining me? Okay. I would be, I, oh, Ronald, Barola, and Messi. That would be insane. Yep. The Battle of the Goats. But people, put down below your your oh, I, what do you think about the Saudi League, the MLS, and any other league that's developing like the J League. If you want more videos just like this, like this video.